Hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Walsh. I'm your host. This is the American Doofus Show. Don't be a doofus. Apparently, to at least one person, I was a doofus on yesterday's episode. Yesterday, we talked about the two militias being in uh, Louisville, one of them being the Wild Card Command. Um, I was contacted by the leader of that militia and was told I didn't know what I was talking about, that they knew the NFAC was not going to be there and they were there for something else. What I saw was they were securing a parking lot and um, they were probably securing it for some other purpose that uh, we aren't aware of. So I reached out to the leader of the militia and asked her to be on the program. That's right, it is, she's, she's a woman. It shouldn't be surprising in 2020 with uh, strong independent women leading a militia. I asked her, uh, I invited her to do a Zoom, uh, to do a phone call, to do an in-person interview the next time I'm in Louisville because I would like to, uh, I don't want to learn specifics. I don't want to know numbers or plans or names or anything like that. I would like to talk some ideology. Um, so if, uh, if you happen to be listening, um, Madam Commander, um, know that the invitation's open. And anybody else that's uh, a part of any militia that wants to talk, we, we will talk. Um, if you want to contact the show, uh, you can contact American Doofus. Uh, you can message me at American Doofus on Facebook, or you can email me at um, American Doofus at gmail.com. We're going to talk about uh, not judging a book by its cover, um, lumping people together as, as tends to happen. Um, all white militias are not three percenters. I've heard some live streamers reporting this stuff. Um, and all three percenters are not racist. Um, at least the one, uh, I know three or four who consider themselves three percenters but don't consider th themselves racist. None of them will come on and talk with me live. Um, and it's the same for the communities of color. Um, not, all, not all black people, not all black militias are, are part of the NFAC. And to assume these things is not only wrong, but it's, it's potentially dangerous. Let me explain why. Bear with me for a minute. In 1979, uh, I was a sophomore in college, and uh, I'd just come out of a class, and uh, the guy that sat beside me, um, he walked. we walked out the door together, we were talking, and he went to the right, and, and I walked uh, to the left. And uh, a guy that went to a rival rival high school that we played sports against each other stopped me and said hey and come on and I said he had a ball bat in his hand I said where are you going he said I'm going after that guy he pointed to my my classmate and uh, what was going on in 1979 there was something called the Iranian hostage crisis where Iran had taken United States citizens hostage and uh, this had just recently happened and uh, I, I said, that, that guy has nothing to do with this. The, the, the guy's from the country of India. He's not from Iran. And uh, the guy used to play sports again said, but close enough. And I said, no, it's, it's not even remotely close enough. But it was skin color. Well, there were beatings on that campus. I, I convinced the, the guy not to go after after my classmate, but but there were beatings on the campus. In 2001, we saw the same thing again after 9-11, when, when people were attacked because it was close enough. And that's, uh, that's an incredible danger with white people and with communities of color because not all white people that look like me and sit behind a flag or sit in front of a flag have the same views as as the racist haters. I sit behind a flag because the flag means it means something to me personally. It means power across the world or it used to before anyway, that's another that's another subject. 
I also want to mention Richard Jewell. For those of you who don't know, Richard Jewell was uh, a security guard in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, during the Olympics in Atlanta, and a bomb went off in um, Olympic Park. And um, the FBI and the media were convinced that Richard Jewell was the bomber. And when in fact he was just an overzealous security guard that um, actually saved people's lives. So too often we listen to the wrong things. We don't take our time and, and judge for ourselves. There are four national, national militia, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center, the constitutional sheriffs, the Oath Keepers, the Three Percenters, and the Not Fucking Around Coalition, the NFAC. Um, that doesn't mean that, that all militias are aligned with any of those four. There are many that are independent militias. There are a lot of people that want a race war. People ask me why I cover this, why, why I spend time doing this, and Jesus says in the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacekeepers, and and I don't want to see war of any kind on our, on our, on our soil. You think toilet paper was hard to come by during a virus? Imagine a war on our own soil amongst our own people. It's too horrific for me to even think about. So I talk about these things. So maybe, maybe people will think. I've been asked to talk about about this uh, about the NFAC about Grandmaster J and about uh, Delta. I was sent several links to, to see what Delta had to say because uh, a lot of people were concerned that, that the NFAC was, was not being led properly. And I was asked, who's right? Well, after watching a lot of things, they're both right because they, they're, they're coming from two different perspectives. Okay. First of all, I talked a lot about Grandmaster Jay. I'm just, again, I, I believe he's coming from a perspective, and I'm not a follower of his. I'm not part of the NFAC. I'm not, not part of anything. I'm just, I'm just trying to, to give an observation. I think he's trying to be a political leader, a spiritual leader, and a military leader. And um, it's tough for anybody to do all three of those things. Now, I think... Delta, Delta's a warrior. I have absolutely no doubt from what I've seen, and, and I'm a pretty decent judge of character most of the time. Delta's a warrior. So why do I say they're both right? Because they're coming from different perspectives. The, one of the major conflicts was about uh, Grandmaster Jay telling Delta he would be arrested if he did something stupid that Grandmaster Jay would turn him over to the police and uh, was worried about the terrorist tag. From a political standpoint, that's a smart thing to say. From a military standpoint, that's not a smart thing to say because it's, it's perceived as disloyal. So I understand why Delta has the problems Delta has. Um, Grandmaster Jay possibly is trying to do too much and rhetoric matters. How you talk to people and what you say to people matters. So that's, that's all I'm gonna say on that for the moment. Um, I think they're both, I think they're both right because they're both coming from different perspectives. And um, without, without the warrior Delta, will the NFAC be the same on September 5th? Um, We'll have to wait and see. It's a dangerous situation. It's a dangerous situation coming up on September 5th in Louisville. Why do I say that? Because of lumping. Because there are too many white people that are ignorant, that are afraid, and that are apt to shoot a gun because it's close enough. There are a lot of black people that don't understand that there are some white people that that don't hate them just because of the pigment of their skin. Um, there are. 
it's gonna if there was a race war it'd be hard to tell who's who who's who other than by pigment I pray we never get there I pray we never get there that's why I cover the things I cover that's what I why I say what I say that's why I'm doing what I'm doing I hope you all have a great week. We're going to be talking about a lot of things coming up, including uh, a major march that's going to be happening in Washington, D.C. Uh, this coming week. In weather, well, we've got a quick weather report. We've got uh, two hurricanes coming back to back into the Gulf of Mexico. It's 2020. We also have a potential asteroid going to be hitting in November, and we'll be talking more about that. In sports, a Japanese guy, Takuma Sato, uh, a guy I had the privilege of covering when I was in the media, uh, a good man, won the Indianapolis 500 today, and uh, that seems kind of trivial compared to everything going on in the world. This country is a um, smoldering hotbed of potential racial conflict and it doesn't have to be that way and I'm hoping a lot of you will join me and make sure it's not that way it's American Doofus show please subscribe please share this post with all on social media take care of yourselves take care of each other if you love somebody tell them you love them if you don't love anybody get the hate out of your heart not enough time for hate Love and peace. Take care of yourselves. Don't be a doofus.